Hello, good morning and welcome to New Frost Morphs. Today Jared and I are going to be checking the three pairs that we put out yesterday and we believe we've got a couple of locks, Jared, yeah. out of the three and the other one um, could well have locked without us realising it. So the rhythm of the room continues and we'll just give you a quick update on those today. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to do two more pairings, Jared. Yeah. We're going to do two new pairings. We've had a couple of animals that shed out that are now available for pairing. And uh, we're also going to do an update on Jared's project. He bought, well, I bought you for your Christmas present about two or three years ago now, wasn't it? Yeah. We went to Southampton Reptiles and we found this beautiful girl, Calico girl, that's got how many genes in her, Jared? I think she's five. What is she? Fire, Plastal, Enchi, Calico, four. She's four four genes. She's a four gene Calico and she's um, doing really well. We're going to do an update. We're going to actually do an ultrasound. Uh, but also we're going to show you some of the natural behaviour so we can contrast when we actually do the ultrasound. You can see what the animals are doing. We've got a couple of animals that are bowl wrapping. Let's have a quick look and just give you an update with what's going on in the facility today. So the one that you caught bowl wrapping, Jared, was it Lala? Yeah. So let's have a look and see the behaviour of bowl wrapping and there she is. classic bowl wrapping and she likes the size of the bowls Jared. She's a big long animal, she's starting to pound. She always wants to be fed on a regular basis and I think we as breeders, we need to be, um, what's the word, self-regulating and we need to, even though the snake might give us the impression they weren't eating, we need to be really careful that we don't overfeed our animals and uh, I've been looking at various articles and various links for a really good mentor who's been guiding me through the process of becoming a more refined breeder and educating me in terms of science and trying to understand the science that's going on behind these animals. And I think for new breeders coming in, we get a little bit of success with our first clutch and it's easy to kind of think that we know what we're doing. In reality, we're just beginning a journey of learning and we need to be humble and teachable. And particularly those that have got years and years of experience who've maybe made several mistakes themselves and know they fine tuned over say 20 years. You have to give respect and uh, uh, have a, uh, an open mind to listen to those that do have experience and particularly those that understand the science behind everything. And they're very rare out there. There's an awful lot of people that um, know a little bit and a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. And uh, I like the fact that we're always learning in this hobby and there's so much the animals can teach us as well. But I think there's things that we need to really get out there and make sure that new beginners and even experienced breeders that perhaps haven't picked up the science take some time and understand the science behind what an animal goes through when you're feeding it. And you know, it's so easy to say, oh that animal's shut out, it's pooed, let's weigh it now while it's empty. Now we might think it's empty, but in actual fact the snake, if it's a big mature snake, could take 11 months to fully empty. <laughs> you know, they've got so much in the tank, there's so much in reserve that um, I think we sometimes make the mistake that we're kind of weighing when an animal's empty. In reality, it will take a long time for a snake to empty. Would you agree, Jack? So that means that there's less pressure on us as breeders to be worried about feeding weekly. In fact, I know some really good breeders who actually breed uh, successfully and they feed their snakes every 10 to 14 days. And I think we've been breeding, we've been feeding our snakes every seven days, Jack, haven't we? Yeah. And I know when you first started in the hobby, you had this natural instinct that you didn't want to overfeed the animals. And you said to me, as a keen newcomer coming in, wanting to build up these animals and get them into production, to just slow down. Jared has this really good influence on me of slowing me down and saying, Dad, we want animals that are in good condition. We don't want big fat animals that, see a lot of the fat reserves, when we wear an animal, we might think, oh, up to 1500, but if we have actually power fed that animal and it's 1500, six or 700 grams of fat could be in some of their vital organs and we think that they're going to be ready. So it's not just about weight, it's about conditioning and about timing. And I think the articles I've been reading have been really helpful and I do appreciate um, the person that sent me these articles because I respect them highly and I do appreciate the science behind it because it's helping me. Knowledge is power. So we need to take time to learn and to gain knowledge and be open-minded and flexible and not rigid in our approaches. So I do, I do appreciate that. So. Let's um, move on to some snakes, and I think the first one we were going to look at, Jared, was should we have a look at the Calico Girl? Sure. Yeah? Maybe before we do that, I want to give a shout out. Can I give a shout out? My YouTube shout out, Jared? You know, sure. I, I enjoy doing it. Now, I've recently subscribed to a channel called uh, The Green Room Pythons. 
this guy his name's Bob he's a lovely he's an entertainer he's actually a professional uh, musician he loves his guitars and he plays his own intro music on his YouTube channel and he plays the banjo now when I was a kid growing up I used to love the banjo <laughs> I don't know if you remember but you probably don't remember this Jab when I was a kid we had this guy on TV that my parents used to love that used to play the banjo at the time and I can't remember his name but he had these big white teeth and he was just he always used to be playing his banjo and I used to love listening to him he used to make me laugh and um, I can't even remember his name now but I'm sure Bob would know, know who I'm talking about but um, Bob teaches, uh, he's a music teacher and he's an artist. And I've seen him throwing, you know, he's, he, on his videos he entertains us. He spends a lot of time editing pretty good high quality videos in my opinion. Very professional looking. And he's got all these different characters that come onto the scene. Highly entertaining. He's got about 3,000 views. He's not been doing it long and he's got some wonderful snakes. So without any further ado, let me introduce you to Bob and his channel. And thank you, Bob, for all the lovely content. He put out a genetic video the other day, which I really enjoyed. Another, another interesting angle to it. So here's Bob, and his YouTube channel is called Green Room Pythons. And let's just have a few, uh, have a little look and see his introduction. Take it away, Bob. <laughs> Wi-Fi might take. If the Wi-Fi takes its takes its time, Jared, then we'll just um, we'll let it just download first. We've got fantastic Wi-Fi in the house, but not such good Wi-Fi in the facility, have we, Jared? Mm. It's a little bit frustrating. We so. have another unboxing today, and this little snake is from none other than ball python legend, Aussie Boyd. This is an awesome little guy, and he is going to help me with a project that I'm working on. And speaking of that project, it's been a while since I've been to the board and talked about genetics. So I'm going to get out my rudimentary art supplies, crayons, tape, maybe paste. I don't know. And we're going to talk about recessive genes. I think Welcome to the group. I think it's really, really good. Really, really good channel. And I love the logo. Look at the logo, Jan. You can tell he's a guitar lover. He loves snakes and guitars and he's put that into his logo. And I like the fact that, also the other thing I must mention is that he promotes um, green issues in terms of using eco-friendly substrate. You know, he's got various setups and you can learn an awful lot from his techniques. And he's very uh, well read. He's done a lot of research. So go, go follow him, give him some, some love and support. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy his channel. Right, let's go and check out this Calico girl, Jack, your favorite girl. One of them. Yeah. <laughs> You fell in love with her as a, ba as a baby hatchling, didn't you, in Southampton Reptiles about two years ago plus. Yeah. And uh, where is she now? Peach is her name, isn't it? Let's get her out. Let's have a look and see how she's doing. We love the calico gene, don't we, Jared? Yeah. Now look at that for a wonderful looking snake. It's got to be one of the prettiest snakes in our facility, would you say, Jared? I think so. Yeah. I think she costs me, well, cost me about 350, 400 pounds at the time. Yeah. Um, and that was nearly two and a half years ago now, wasn't it? Getting on for two and a half. And she's been slow building, hasn't she? She's not been uh, the fastest of feeders, but no. in a way it's been good because Jad takes a much more slower, gentle approach to building his animals up. So she's probably going to be sexually mature. What kind of behaviour has she given you, Jared, that gives you any... any does, it, does she give you any pointers as to whether you think she's getting ready to breed or what's your feeling on it all? Um, I mean, we've seen her around her bowl a couple of times, but... Yeah. On the whole, I think she's just still eating her food, but... Yeah, she has actually stepped up her feeding. <laughs> um, and that's one of the indicators that you look for, is that when the girls pick up that they want to start breeding, they will be more aggressive with their feeding. So that's mm -hmm. one thing to consider. She has been bowl wrapping, and she has been coming to the rub, scenting the rhythm of the room when other pairs are in place. So I think it's a... There are quite a few indicators that you can use without the ultrasound, where you think, okay, how do we, but we should check her body condition, and that's important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pick her up and actually check her body conditioning, have a film. We will, we will weigh her, but weight isn't the most important thing here. It's all about conditioning as well as weight and age. So she's kind Might of... Might be good to ultrasound her while she's still. <laughs> do you want to ultrasound her while she's still? Yeah, because when you start picking her up, she'll start moving around. Okay, let's go into the ultrasound first then. Do you want to get that sound? Yeah, easy. okay. 
Right, Jared's going to do the ultrasound, and what he's done is because Jared prefers the factory setting, he's reset the um, ultra scan to the factory setting. And she's lovely, isn't she, Jared? Her yeah. whites are coming up, and you know when they're hatching. She used to be things, pink. She was pink when we bought her, wasn't she, Jared? Yeah. And just look how the pink picks up. And she's what you call quite a high white calico, a good specimen. Yeah, she's got nice high sides. I think Enchi pastel and calico. And fire, especially and fire. And fire makes the whole thing pop. Fire calicos and pastel calicos are the main. Yeah. But all of them together, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Right, let's see if we can find some follicles. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll do the scientific inside first, and then we'll do the weighing and conditioning after. So Jared prefers the factory setting on here. So you can see the rib cage, and Jared's found some internal organs there. I can see a couple of internal organs. I think the eggs. Oh, the eggs. Yeah, if you stop Shall there. Shall I freeze it? Yeah. Okay. That's a follicle, and then you can see, if I kept going down, you'll see these follicles getting bigger at the sides here. Okay. So if you look where I am at the snake, yeah. that's right where the follicles are going to be, the lower third. Well done, Jared. You're getting really good at this. <coughs> Hopefully, the more we do, the quicker these ultrasound scans are going to take and we can give you a lot more action. I mean, I am very conscious of the fact that we take our time trying to find these follicles, but I think it does give you the realistic view that when we are doing this, this is what it takes as a beginner. And as you become more experienced, then you can get this down to a fine art. And some people I know that have got massive collections can go through the ultrasound of like two or 300 animals within about uh, a day. So um, they've obviously got it down to quite an art form. She does, she does look lovely, Jan. She really does. I just love the entry effect on her. She's gorgeous. Oh, she's lovely. She's got some good conditioning as well. Look how thick she is at the rear end, Jan. I think yeah. there's a lot of muscle there. Not yeah, so much fat, but there's good muscle there. And I think that's going to bode well when we decide to pair her. So what are you doing, Jan? Jan? Just talk us through the... So we're just measuring the the eggs. Yeah. What guess? Do you want to guess? Or? Oh, she's nine. So she's that close now as to 10. We yeah. like them to be around about 10. But I would have guessed that she's close to being ready to breed Jazz. So that's a good indicator. And she's over three years of age. Jazz going to now record that into the reptile scan. Yes. What I would like to find out, Jazz, maybe we can ask Adam, is there a Wi-Fi connection on the scan that will feed into our software on our phones so we don't have to I do this? It. I doubt it. There might be a way of finding out. We need to find out because I think it would save a little bit of time. Right, let's now move on to the more traditional methods of um, finding out whether she's ready. Now, you know I like to weigh my animals because I think that's, and I like to study their age. If there's two things we know you like, is putting them in the light box <laughs> and weighing them. Well, let's do that then. <coughs> let's do that. And the reason I like doing it is because I think if you want to really appreciate their colours, the light box is a wonderful, wonderful yeah. tool, isn't it, Jared? I mean, she's showing her colours beautifully outside the light box, but can you imagine what that's going to look like in the light box? Do you want to guess the weight? Um, just under 14. Under 14? Just. Okay. Now it's look at 14, her. Actually. Look at her body and look at her. I can feel mu lots of muscle in this snake. Yeah. I, can, I, I don't see a lot of fat. We're not handling her as much as we should, but she's starting to become more socialized, I think. Yeah. And she's very interested and very uh, inquisitive. And I think that she's very muscular. So I'm going to probably go along with you on that Jad. I reckon she's close to 14, 1400 I'd say. Yeah. So let's just see how she's looking. So if we just set the uh, scales up, put the light box ready to go as well. Let's just give her away. I can feel how solid she is Jared. Yeah. How? Let me just, she's so solid that she's not allowing me to, can you see that even just trying to get her into the rub, <laughs> Oh my goodness, she's 15, 18, 15, 19, Jared. She's bigger than we think. Yeah. And a lot of that is muscle. And it doesn't surprise me that she's got 10, me 10 millimeter follicles because she is three years old, isn't she? Yeah. And therefore she's more likely to be sexually mature. See, the other thing about not overfeeding your snakes is that if you don't overfeed your snakes, the follicles can grow better. Yeah. And why would that be, Jared? I think there's more space. They're not pushed up against food. Exactly. And also the muscle that they've got in their bodies is going to be much better for them because they've got more space for the follicles to grow. So I think the other thing, of course, is that we don't realise that their me metabolic rate 
goes through the roof if you don't allow them to rest from feeding. And so it's really important that when you get into breeding that you choose your time to up the feeding and there's a time, the timing of that's very important. Let's put her into the light box and let's see what she looks like in there. She's not going to coil up for us though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get her, I mean she's so muscular you can feel that she, she might, she might coil up but she's going to look beautiful in there Jared. I mean just take a look at how beautiful she is. There you go, John. <laughs> lovely colours, isn't she lovely? Just look at that beautiful popcorn white and very high white. Look at the tail, Joe, the height that you've got on that tail. Yeah. She was always a high white specimen when you found her. Oh, yeah, she was bright, she was bright pink. Bright she pink. Looked, she literally looked like a peach. Yeah. That's why she's called peaches. <coughs> you gonna keep her name? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> You're not gonna call her popcorn now, are you? <laughs> no, I think you'll be one of her babies. Yeah, I think she'll produce some amazing offspring, Jack. And uh, talking of which, what what were you thinking of pairing to her? Let's see if she's ready. Obviously, we've got various combinations that we can put to her. Yeah. Well, our plan our plan was to put the super pastel orange dream banana, and try and get all of those genes. If we can get a super pastel fire enchi calico banana orange dream. Yeah. That would be wicked. So she'll end up with seven codons in her. Yeah. So there's a strategy for your bit breeding plans is that we've got all these recessive projects building on the back burner, but we mustn't underestimate the power of the codons. And of course, codons will allow you to get these into the, your animals a lot quicker. Recessives take a lot longer because you need two versions of the gene to get them in. But if we end up producing a seven gene animal, Jared, yeah. stud male, that we plug into all our recessive projects, yeah. can you imagine what they would do to the clown clutches everything's going to have two or three different codons in there and, and nice ones as well orange dream all the orange dream um enchi um calico. Uh, calico they're all beautiful genes aren't they so i really like the fact that um you've got that vision jared yeah and both Her babies will be beautiful as well because usually with calicos well not always sometimes low white calicos can throw high white but yeah i've heard that a lot of calicos throw the same similar pattern now look at the behaviour, because she's not fat, she's more muscular, you can see that she wants to explore me and wrap around me. She's got the muscle density and that's probably what we're looking to achieve in all our snakes is to make sure they're more muscular than fat. And I think you'll find that it isn't a question of getting them up to weight quickly, it's a question of slow steady progress, real progress. And you'll find that she'll bounce back quicker after she gives us a clutch. And um, I think it's just going to be a lot better for them and she's less stressed out, there'll be less health issues if if she's got that balance right and she's, you know, she hasn't got a high stress level in her because it does stress them out feeding them. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that she's had a long period of rest and she's also not over eight, we had to give her multis, small multis to get her going, didn't we, Jared? And I think it's actually blessed her long term. It'll bless us long term as well. So um, really, really helpful. Let's um, slip her back. And then I think what we'll do, Jared, is we'll check on the other pairings. We'll do a couple of new pairings and check on the other three pairings. Yeah. But look, she's, I can feel the muscle on her. I mean, yeah, look, she's a solid girl. She, look, can you see? She, doesn't, she almost doesn't want to leave me. And I, and I, I, I can feel the strength. We're probably going to have to get a slightly bigger height as well. But yeah, she a really big one. Yeah. So I want you to imagine those colours, orange dream, banana, super pastel going into that as well. So everything will be super pastel because she's a pastel. Well, they won't. Oh yeah, and he's super and he's pastel. a super pastel. So, so there's, you've a, got good, a, chance, there's a good chance, chance that fifty percent of them will be super pastel. And if they get the Enchi Calico in there as well as the Orange Dream, it could be. Other way around. Uh, it could be mind blowing, Jared. It could be mind blowing. I suppose there's another side. Is it fifty percent chance? So if you have a super pastel to a She'll pastel, twenty five percent of her babies will be. Oh no, 50 of her babies and then all of her, his babies. So everything will be pastel and half of them I think will be super pastel. Yeah. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think, I think you're right. That moves us on nicely. I think we're not going to do any more ultrasounding so we'll save the battery. Um, put that to one side. But what I'd like to do now is I'd like to show you the, the other pairings before we pair. So this one here, Jared. They were locked this morning. They were locked this morning. I popped in because um, I like to check the facility twice a day. I think it's a good practice because you come in in the morning clean so they're not living in their poo and wee all day long. 
and then you come in the evening and do some spot cleaning so no one's living in any poo you know just some quick spot cleaning and then the next morning you then do the major clean and then the other thing that I think I like to do is I like to check on humidity I top up the um, fogger because that will see me topping up so that in the night the humidity stays it's staying at 66 at the moment which is absolutely perfect for breeding and um, we check temps we just adjust everything that we need to and I think if you fine-tune your system on a regular basis, you'll find that your snakes will be happier. But let's have a look at the Apollo. Now he locked. I don't think he's locked now. I've got a picture of them locked. Did you get a picture of them locking? Yeah. Is that on your camera? Yeah. Do you want to get it out? I'm going to show, show them the picture of the lock. Um, but while we're doing that, Jared, this is the boy, the, the um, Apollo, who is the Orange Dream Super Pastel. Uh, boy and it's funny because we've got another calico girl who's an excellent specimen Jared isn't she just look at how beautiful she is yeah she's FNF line isn't she she's the FNF line of calico which is renowned for being a really high-end line and they have locked last year but she didn't go so we're trying again and they uh, locked today and they locked today so that's really good so what we'll do Jared is we'll just move him um, back into his rock we're going to give him a nice long break and make sure that he's back up for reconditioning before we pair him again. We like to make sure we've had at least a meal. Yeah, at least one meal. Usually usually we leave him at least a week before pairing, sometimes longer. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to try and aim for three or four weeks where possible, which you yeah. might think is... Well, when you've got multiple a snake and multiple ones, it's not quite yeah. doable, but, yeah. but at least got... minimum a week, I think. Yeah. Let's have a look at this girl here. She's very similar to your peaches, isn't she? Her name's Pringle. Yeah, she she's doesn't not, have all the other genes. She's not a fat snake. No. She's what, what I call a muscular snake that's um, got the potential to give us a clutch. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that Apollo, we know he's a proven breeder, so he's given us his first clutch last year. We'll do the business. Let me take the yellow tags off to know that that's now out of the breeding rotation. And the other two, Jad, that we put together? Um, I already separated. Separated? Separ <laughs> separated one. Separated? Separated one this morning. Yeah, which one did you separate? Uh, that was the albino clown combo. So we put the albino clown combos Combo together. Sure. There was no, was only smell of scenting in there. Could it you smell? filthy in there. <laughs> Dirty sex? It was poo and wee and everything, so <laughs> it was a big cleaning job. Jared had to clean them out, but we decided this is his first time breeding. I mean, a day together is a good intro. You don't want to be putting your boys in. It can stress them out, and they can stress the girls out too, because if a boy wants to breed and the female doesn't, you've got to read the body language and see what's going on. But let's have a quick look at her and see how she's doing. And the boy. So, is it this one? Which one is it, Jenna? Zena. Let's see what she's doing now. So she's got a lovely, clean setup now. Well done, Jennifer. And there she is. She's just relaxing on the hot spot. A little head over there. She's relaxed, isn't she relaxed? Yeah. So she had her first day and she's thinking that was wonderful. She's in cloud nine. She's thinking about Yazoo now. Um, and then the other one was. Uh, what was the other pairing that we had? The one below. It was uh, Electra and Skip. And they locked. I don't know if they still are. Uh, it looks Tell like they've just finished. Tell to telling it. But they were locked this morning as well, and oh, they made a state in there, Rob. What well. a state. We're going to leave them together for a bit longer. Um, but the lovely thing is, Skip has already locked two other uh, yeah, he's clowns. He's, 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 he's actually a star. And because we know that he's um, in great condition, and we know that he is um, showing us that he's got plenty of uh, strength in him. We will let him go for probably another half a day or so. We'll check tonight and see whether they're locked. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to be moving them in and out if they're still showing signs of locking um, because you want to give them the full opportunity to lock maybe two or three times sometimes. I mean, it only takes once, but I think we, we, it's one of those things where you, both Jared and I discuss it and say, do we take them out? Do we leave them in? And I got instinct to say, leave them in for a bit longer. And then when they're separated and they're not interested in each other, usually that's the indication you think, well, it's time now to separate them. That's why it's um, so important to know your snakes. Yeah, you got to know your snakes, that's absolutely true. Um, let's have a quick look at Yasu, because he's had his first date. I want to make sure he's okay. So, he's down there. Do you want to just have a look, Jack? See how he's doing. Do you think he enjoyed his first date? Yeah, I reckon. He's happy, he's on the hot spot. Just off it. It's interesting, isn't it? 
the girl's on her hot spot. He's just off his hot spot. But they look, both of them look like they're quite happy and content. They've had a nice evening together, their first date. Um, we're not disappointed that we didn't see a visual lock because we know that this is a process and it and takes time. We could have always missed it as well. So. Yeah. Right, so that moves us on now to two further pairing. uh, pairings that we're going to do today. And what are we going to go for, Gav? So we've got Bowser, which is our dream school male. So let's have a look at Bowser. I just cleaned him out. He shed perfect shed today. And let's have a look at his conditioning. Isn't he lovely, Jared? What yeah, a beautiful, he's a beautiful boy. He's got these lovely starburst looking patterns on him. Yeah. And he's such a cool character. I really love him a lot. And so we will put him to who are we gonna put him to? Calico. Oh uh, Calypso. Calypso. This is this is your girl, Jared, your beautiful clown. And what are we trying to produce here? Um, we, well, she's 100% hit pie, so the goal is for us to have a, um, she'll be pastel, pied, double hat, dream school, uh, double hat, lavender clown. Which is an awesome project. Now, let's, before we do anything, let's just study her behaviour, Jared. So, she's on the hot spot. Yeah. Now, we need to really create a little bit of atmosphere in there, which I haven't done yet. So, I've got my sprayer. I like to have a little bit of water on the base of the bedding. There's two ways you can do it. We can do it this way when it's already spilt a little bit. That's one way of doing it. So you don't, some animals don't like to be sprayed. I spray a little bit at the back like that, a little bit on her. She, she doesn't like to be sprayed, so I'd rather spray the bedding. And what that does, it's a small adjustment, it takes two seconds but it makes a huge difference to success. Now, we haven't, Bowser hasn't locked yet. We've put him to several girls before, haven't we? And he's yet to show us a lock. <laughs> he's producing sperm, mm. but he'll go when he's ready, won't he, Jared? So hopefully he'll fall in love with this beautiful darling clown, which is our, one of our favorite clowns. And um, we'll get a lock, and we shall find out later today or tomorrow. But um, we're not freaked out that he hasn't locked yet, because I think there will come a time when he will lock, and we've just got to be patient. Lovely, Jared. So, they both are kind of, their body language is, is obviously early days. They haven't really recognized that they, 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 like, they like to be in the dark. So look, let's get them in there and we'll come back to them later today and tomorrow and see what happens there. And what was the other pairing, Jared? Uh, Jasper to Athena. Jasper to Athena. That's our crystal hip so pine. Let's look at Athena first. There's Athena. So again, we'll just pour a little bit of water on the bedding. And I think that will just help. That will help them. And he's up there. Now this is the girl, that, this is the mother of our defective clutch here, Jared. And we put Elvis to her last year and she gave us four babies that had the mm. issues that we shared yesterday. You were right, by the way, about them being from the same same place. Thank you, Jared. Yeah, you yeah. have to admit the feet on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you, check, you checked it out. <laughs> I swallowed my pride and realised it was actually you were right. Yeah, I, when it comes to buying stuff, Jared, I'm normally pretty hot on remembering where things are coming from. It's kind of, I've got a quite good long term memory. Um, so it is there. Now, if, let's look at her, you know, look at her body shape, look at her, how she's doing. She, what, the reason why I think we should um, put a different melter this year is because. Um, I think my feeling is that if there's a genetic problem, it's likely to be in the mother than the father. Because Elvis, which is our super cinnamon pied, has produced so many healthy clutches. Mm. And this is her first ever clutch last year, wasn't it? She didn't go the year before. Yeah. So when you have your first clutch and it's a defect clutch, you have to then think if the, if the male has been producing healthy animals and this is the first time you've got problems, it's either one of two things. It's going to be temperature problems in the in in the facility, or it's going to be temperature problems in the um, incubator, or more likely, I think in this case, it's going to be that they are probably related, and there might be some genetic weaknesses that manifest themselves because you put the male and female together and they're from the same family. But we know that the male that's going to go to her is from a different offspring, completely different. So this is going to be an interesting experiment, and please uh, follow us on this one. We're going to put a different male to her and see what she produces. Is that fair enough, Jared? Yeah. So the male that we're going to be putting to her is Jasper, who is our crystal uh, 
crystal 100% hep pied. And what's in a crystal, Jack? It's a Mojave special. He's let out a little bit of hissing there. So he's a beautiful, beautiful male. And what we'll do is we'll just gently introduce them. <laughs> 